Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and ting and ting and ting. Back with more vibes for all you. Yes, I am. This one is another one that somebody told me that I should watch, you know. This one is Geography Now, Romania. And they said, hey, hey, Mr. Bombastic Nation and ting. Check this vibe out and see what's going on with it. You understand what I say? So, without keeping you too long, let's YouTube and Sim Simmer. If any of you have ever had a family reunion, you all know what it's like to have a Romania show up. It's like... Yeah, it doesn't matter if you're in a cold, dark castle or a tropical beach with margaritas. If you're Latin, you're part of the family. <laughs> No, I'm not gonna make any Dracula jokes, and do not call these people Slavs, and no, unless they actually are gypsies, do not call Romanians gypsies. Yeah, we hate that, and they only make up like 3% of our population. Yeah, and don't call us gypsies. We prefer Roma or Roman. That's yeah. too close to Romanian. Just stick with gypsy. That's how this whole mess got started. We're gonna look into the Romani people. Gave us that title, gypsy, I'm intrigued by them. Egyptians. So what do you want to be called? Roma or Romani? Ah! Oh! So, yeah. Anyway, let's look at the globe and see where Romania is on the map, shall we? Let's see. Romania is unique because it's not only positioned in a weird spot, but it's culturally isolated. It's like the easternmost point of Latin influence. Quite a story, and it all starts in Europe. Romania is the 12th largest country in Europe, located at the crossroads between what Did not know that. Central, Eastern, and Southern Europe. So it's hard to give it a single regional title. But for what it's worth, it borders five other countries in the Moldova, East. Ukraine, Ukraine. is divided into Soviet. 41 counties with their own city councils. However, to make things easier, the counties are kind of clustered into eight development regions, which don't actually have any administrative power, but rather tie groups of counties together to facilitate economic activity. Culturally speaking, though, Romania is also kind of divided into three general historical regions. Moldavia, Wallachia, and the well-known Transylvania. Yes. Transylvania. We'll talk about that later. The capital yeah. Bucharest, located in the south, Bucharest. acts as its own county, and of course has the highest population of any city. Here, you can also find the largest international airport, Henry Kalanda International. Otherwise, in the second largest city, Cluj-Napoca, in the northeast, you can find the second busiest airport, Avram Yanku International. And of course, in the third largest city, Timisoara, you can find the third busiest airport, Kirayanguia International. Otherwise, anything shipping related usually comes in from the Black Sea with the largest port, the port of Constanza, which is also the largest shipping port on the Black Sea. Keep in mind, just a skip away is Snake Island that Romania and Ukraine had a small dispute over that finally got resolved in 2009. Ukraine won. Dang. Anywho, the country has a wide, extensive rail and road network that reaches every neighboring nation, disputably the busiest road being the A2 and A3 roads, linking the Black Sea to Bucharest and further to Hungary, traversing the Carpathian Mountains. Otherwise, Romania is unique because the country in itself didn't always look the way it did. There's Moldavia, not to be confused with Moldova, although Moldova does get its historical name from that area. There's also Wallachia and the infamous Transylvania. That's right, Transylvania is in Romania, but it should belong to Hungary. We'll get to that later. Now, Romania is definitely not shy of making landmarks and sites of interest that stick out. And they take many aesthetic cues from multiple people groups. You'll see buildings that look French, buildings that look Slavic, some that look German, and some that just kind of do their own thing. For what it's worth though, here are some cool. of the spots you guys, the Romanian geography suggested we mention. The Palace of Parliament, the Ooh. National Heroes Mausoleum, the Gates of Iron, Constanza Casino, the Silly Cemetery of Maramures, this pole thing, Salina Turda, this ancient Dacian site, the King Decibel statue, the Tunnel of Love, this really cool bookstore, this ancient temple. Sibiu is like the most Transylvanian city you can get. Houses even have eyes on Whoa. them. So many churches like these, including one that was built into a cliff and the tallest wooden church in the world. Brasov and Rashnov also have those cool citadels and churches. They even have those Hollywood signs on hills. There's so many castles, many of which are said to be haunted, but the most famous one probably being Bran Castle, or Dracula's Castle. Yes, Dracula's Castle. Dracula Castle, which is not even mentioned as the home of Dracula in the book, and it was written by an Irish guy, and Vlad the Impaler was just an inspiration of Dracula. He wasn't actually Dracula, and he never even set foot in this castle. Will you shut up? Don't give away our secret. This creepy gimmick makes us a lot of money. <laughs> but regardless, you taught me motion graphics and helped me launch the entire channel. He's a vampire! Oh, well, bad. Yeah, lots of creepy haunted sites going on. And it doesn't stop at the buildings. They have entire forests that people are afraid to step into. Which brings us to... I'll step into it. Romania is 
it's kind of like the land of legend and electricity. They have so many myths, yet they move forward with the age of energy. They were actually the first European country to have electric streetlights, and they even have a Prometheus statue holding a lightning bolt. For what it's worth, though, the nation is about evenly divided by plains, hills, and mountains, with the mighty Carpathian Mountains, the third largest chain in Europe, dominating the north and central parts. Here you can find the highest peak, Mount Moldovano, in the hook of the southern Carpathians. From there, there's one little detached cluster of mountains in the northeast known as the Apuseni Mountains, which effectively makes the hills of Romania kind of look like Pac-Man. And in these Apuseni Mountains, you can find Skarishwara, which claims to be the largest underground glacier in the world. These wow. mountains are essentially formed That's cool. by a smaller Carpathian micro-fault line within the larger Eurasian tectonic plate. This is also what explains how even though Romania is inland, it has small distinct areas of geothermal activity, such as the mud volcanoes of Berka and small hot springs in the west side of the country. Between these mountains and hills, you have the Transylvanian Plateau, where you can find the largest non-shared river fully within Romania, the Mures River. However, on the east and south sides, you have the Moldavian and Wallachian Plains, where the longest river shared with Bulgaria, the mighty Danube, flows into the Black Sea. Along the Black Sea coast, you get the flattest and incredibly beautiful Danube Delta area, the second largest delta in Europe after the Volga, and is considered the most well-preserved. This area in itself is a biosphere reserve and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is the largest continuous marshland in Europe and has over 1,600 plant species alone. This whole flat cool. marshy area along the coast is also known as the Dobruja region. Here you can find what is considered the largest lake of Romania, known as Lake Razelm, which is actually a freshwater lagoon known as a Liman. This lake actually used to be connected to the Black Sea as a salty lagoon, but in the 70s, a thin land barrier was built to keep the Black Sea out, which has now changed the ecological conditions drastically, making it a freshwater lake. Overall, if you zoom out, it's a relatively lush European country. Now with that, it's time for my triple shot espresso break. Noah usually comes in for this segment, but unfortunately he's still out visiting family. So how about we add some pumpkin spice to this order, shall we? Get it? Pumpkin. In the shortest way to summarize it, Romania started out as a shaky post-communist state that many people didn't know how to interact with. Essentially, joining the EU in 2007 really helped. It was like, All right, so we just had a revolution. Uh, communism is gone. We'd like to join your party. Here's our application. Hmm, everything seems to be in order. We do have some sprucing up to do. Oh, okay, just hear me out. We're going through legislative reforms. Uh, we're opening up a free market. And just to prove we're dedicated, we even put visa regimes on countries like Russia and Turkey. You have to wait 14 years, you won't be Schengen, and you have to use your own currency. Woohoo! I'll take it! Hey, what the f***, Romania? You totally ditched me back there! It came then I meant! And that's how lots of money started flowing to Romania. Today, Romania is the largest electronics producer in Central and Eastern Europe. Due to the highly hmm. fertile land, Romania has lots of cheap and abundant produce. Often at the end of harvest season, you will see huge stacks of things like cabbage and watermelon. I love watermelon with lemon. So do you, Paul? I know you do. Oh, yeah. They are one of the most underrated wine producing countries in the world usually I'm have to check out the, 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 the wine and thing Romania has the third highest capacity for geothermal energy on continental Europe after Greece and Italy Ahem. I said continental you're an island and not even fully in Europe okay otherwise as a very lush and forested nation Ooh. Romania is home to numerous animal species like foxes hares bats remember good old Wojtek well Romania has the largest population population of brown bears in the world outside of Russia. And keeping up with the spooky theme, Romania has quite a few haunted or cursed natural sites. The two most famous ones probably being the witch's pond. Okay, that's a bad witch voice as well. Where scary things are said to happen and even animals won't drink from it or go near it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, Hoya. Hoya. You know we have a Ho rainforest where I'm from? <laughs> yeah, it's called the Ho rainforest. And Hoya Forest, labeled the most haunted forest in the world where people have seen everything from monsters, ghosts, UFOs, and even a portal that leads to an alternate universe. I don't believe it. How can you have monsters and UFOs in the same place? So anyway, yeah. Food. Some Ooh. top dishes that you guys suggested include maize porridge, plum dumplings, these really cool ground meat rolls, placenta pastries, placenta, <laughs> plus placenta, toki tura stew, jelly fried meat platters, organ meatloaf, and the national dish sarmala, which was actually brought over from the Turks during the Ottoman times. But I'll try some of them thing there. And stuff it with pork. So that's kind of a unique Romanian twist, I guess. And things get even more. Twisty, once you learn about the people, which brings us to... 
Let's learn about the peeps. Thank you, Art. You're welcome, Barbie. Send me home. All right. The Romanians have a saying. They are a Latin island in a Slavic sea. If you look at the position of Romania on the map, literally everyone surrounding them is not like them. But we'll get into that later. First, Romania has just about 19.5 million people and has seen a 16.2 population decrease since its peak in 1991 at 23 million. The majority oh. of the country at about 88% identifies as Romanian to whatever degree, whether it be one or both parents being Romanian. After that, the second largest minority group would be the Hungarians, and more specifically, the CK people, found mostly in the Transylvanian area. After that, the Roma, Romani, often called Gypsy, come in at third place at around 3%, and the rest are a bunch of other groups like Ukrainians, Germans and general Europeans, and very few non-Europeans. Now, even though they are part of the EU, they are not part of the Eurozone, and they use their own currency, the Romanian Leu. They use the type of CF plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, back to the identity thing. Even though Romanians hate being called Slavs, they have to kind of admit Slavic culture has kind of put a major dent in their upbringing and identity. I mean, somewhere around 15% of their language is Slavic-based. On top of that, like most Slavs, Romania and Moldova are the only Latin-based Orthodox predominant nations on Earth. Huh. It's like we're backwards virgin of each other. How did all of this happen, though? Well, to summarize, the area of what is now Romania was known in antiquity as Dacia, or Dacia, inhabited by Dacians, which were basically cousins to the mysterious Thracian people. History doesn't record too much about them, but they were known for having interesting customs, warfare techniques, Spartacus was a Thracian, and many of them were known for being redheads. Whoa! Ancient ginger warriors? That's pretty cool. Oh. Then, in like the second century BC, the Romans came in and pretty much destroyed everything and made it their province. Moved a ton of Romans in and Romanized everything. Oh, well. This is essentially how the land of Romania became the easternmost point of Latin influence in Europe. Over time, Slavic tribes migrated south after the Roman Empire fell, but they avoided the Carpathian and Black Sea coast, which they knew were Latin strongholds. After gaining ground in the Balkans, this essentially isolated Romania from every other Latin-based area, which kind of explains how they became a distinct people group. So that's basically how it all went down. Then we get to the CK people, the second most populous minority. Yes, that's how you pronounce it, CK. Basically cousins of the Hungarians. These people are steadfast in the holding on to their culture, language, and claim over the Transylvanian region, known as CK land. They even have their own flag. Today, it's not such a big deal, but once every so often, you might get a little bit of tension between the Romanians and the CK. On top of that, Romania was a previous kingdom that ended in 1947, with King Michael I being the last king until he was forcibly abdicated by the Communist Party. Context, Hannah wanted to be the king of Romania in this skit. <laughs> Well, good to have you visit, your highness. But are you sure you don't want to seek asylum here? No, no, thank you. I shall return my people with me and respect like others. Very well. Safe travels. Sign this paper saying you won't be king anymore. We'll kill you. Well, I tried. And today there are actually three people that can technically claim heir to the former monarch of Romania. But anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Now it's time for Random Hannah with Culture Stuff. Now with Romanian culture. It gets a little intense because they are saturated in myth and legend, especially with major life events like birth, marriage, and even death. Some of the traditions include things like for a kid's first birthday, it is common to cut a lock of hair from the baby and keep it forever. Also, people might give offerings to I've the baby by leaving gifts on the windowsill. Romanian weddings are also pretty extreme. It's common for the bride to get kidnapped by friends of the family for a silly ransom. During the kidnapping, the bride just kind of hangs out and drinks at a bar or something. I watched some YouTube videos about that. But then the girls look happy at the end. It's weird, okay? And there are so many other small customs and festivals, like the Midsummer Festival, where women dress in white. The Kaloi and Noel rainmaking ritual performed by children after Easter or a hot day. Christmases are very important to them. In Romania, they go buck wild, making as much noise as possible, wearing costumes, sometimes having whips, and carrying staffs to ward off evil spirits. There's also that festival where the dudes wear women's clothing and masks with loud bells and they parade to ward off disease and evil spirits. On St. Andrew's Day, it's common to eat garlic and spread garlic all over the house to ward off the evil spirits. Yes, as well as the stegoi, which are like Romanian zombies. Superstitions, charms, and so on are heavily ingrained in their upbringing. In fact, they even have a 16% black magic income tax for anyone that works in the profession, such as fortune telling or witchcraft. Now, every region of Romania has their own full 
folk costume, which generally look pretty similar, but you'll notice they all kind of have like a Balkan Slavic influence style. Romania also has some Nobel Prize winners, and they are known for quite a few inventions such as insulin, car wheels that are positioned on the inside of a car's frame, and the fountain pen. And now to Keith's music segment, but actually guys, Keith is not here. He's in Germany. Will he make it on this episode of Geography Now? Stay tuned in the next two seconds to find out. Yeah, no, Keith is still not here. He, uh, oh, okay, sorry I'm late. Did I miss anything? No one's back. No, actually, since Keith is not here, why don't you take the music section? You got it. Let's get this party started. Show okay. here. Oh, yes. Oh. Here we go. As an isolated Latin people group, surrounded mostly by Slavs, traditional music in Romania has always had a noticeable Eastern and Balkan European twang to it. String instruments are probably the most preferred form of musical device and even for percussion. This string instrument is commonly used. Some of the most common folk styles include Doina, or the Shepherd's Longing Song, and the Song of the Elders. Each region has kind of their own version of these styles. After World War II, they really started to dabble up the folk and classic genres and started the Musica Ushuara Romanesca period, which means easy Romanian music. Georges Enescu, being one of the prominent figures during this time, regarded as one of, if not the most important icon of Romanian musicians. After the fall all of communism and opening up to the world, Romania dabbled even further with so many new brands of singers emerging into genres like rock, pop, house, and underground, and disputedly the most prevalent genre, electronic. Today there are about 10 major nationwide electronic music festivals found all over Romania, like Noise, Untold, and the biggest one, the Hill Music and Arts Festival. Fun fact, you know that Numa Numa song? Yeah, that takes back about 10 years, right? Well, that band called Ozone was actually a Moldovan band with one Romanian guy. But, I mean, Moldova, Romania, they're like basically the same people. Yes, you are. You know you are. You're basically one of us. Yes, you are. Yeah, but, uh, There is no but. You are one of us. And there's lots of other Romanian musicians and bands. We'll mention them later in the famous people section. Now, it's back to you, old barbs. Here we go. All right, so in the quickest way I can summarize the history of Romania, Dacia, Roman Empire, tribal migration, Middle Ages, split into three, Ottomans, Austro-Hungarian, Russians came in, World War I, country unites, things look good until boom, World War II, lose parts of what were formerly parts of the country, satellite USSR, Soviet banished royal family, really bad communist year, dictator deposed, democratic elections, European Union in 2007, and here we are today. Some famous people you guys, the Romanian geography, suggested we mention in this episode include, full disclosure, I'm going to probably mispronounce everything, Klaus Ioannis, Gika I remember Nadia Comanacci. Dustin Hoffman's parents are from Romania. Stan Lee's parents, Sergio Nicolescu, Gopo, Amza, and Oana Pelea, Dem Radulescu, John Constantine, Andrea Esca, Angela Georgiou. I am so sorry, Romanians. I can't. I, I, I can't. But anyway, a lot of Romanians and a lot of friends that the Romanians have made over the years. So let's find out who they are. <laughs> When it comes to friends, Romanians have a saying, their only best friend is the Black Sea, because it never tried to invade them. In all seriousness, though, recent changes in the past three centuries have drastically changed the way how they operate their diplomacy. For one, after dropping communism and becoming a member of NATO and the EU, of course relations with other EU members have grown since the 2000s, and although they are one of the less wealthier EU states, their GDP and quality of life has risen thanks to heavy investments and loans offered by the EU. This, of course, has strained relations with Russia. Romania was once part of the Warsaw pact that essentially cooperated with the former Soviet Union until the early 90s when everything broke apart. Not only that, but the whole conflict with Transnistria in Moldova only heightened tensions between Romania and Russia over time. Serbia is kind of like the only neighbor they have that they are pretty cool with, as no major conflicts have ever arisen between the two. Romania also sides with Serbia's dispute in the whole Kosovo conflict. With Bulgaria, it's kind of like they suffer together as the lowest ranking EU states in terms of quality of infrastructure. They're not even allowed to be part of the Schengen or Europe. Eurozone yet. As Danube River and Black Sea neighbors with a shared history of dealing with Ottoman Empire years, they do as much as they can to keep each other afloat. For what it's worth though, Romania loves to meet up with their distant cousins, the Italians and Spanish. When they meet up, it's like something just clicks and they get each other, even though they have completely different clothing and customs. On top of that, they have a huge crush on France, though France is like hardcore friend zoning them. Before English became the second most commonly spoken language, French was actually way more popular. They copied lots of French 
style architecture. They adopted French words and they pretty much copy pasted the French. Mother C, Mother C. It comes to their best friends, so almost every Romanian has told me it's not even a friend, it's not even family. Moldova is basically the same as Romania. Moldovans are essentially the closest people, their closest brothers and sisters. They basically speak the same language. Moldova just has a little bit more of a Russian influence. They love sharing a glass of wine, and no matter how detached they are from the rest of the Latin world, at least they have each other. In conclusion, with Romania, you do get the land of electricity and myths and legend, so much folklore, yet so many crazy things that have happened that made them into who they are. Stay tuned, Russia, the big guy, is coming up next. Wow. I remember lots of story about uh, uh, Romania. I, I was, was that 1972 or 1976? With uh, Nadia Comaneci. I watched that whole thing, man. I was, I was like, that's when I first uh, started to get interested in Romania because of uh, Nadia Comaneci. Take it, though. But, uh, man, that was interesting. It doesn't seem to have a whole lot of diverse ethnic groups there, per se, compared to the others. Maybe because it's smaller. I don't know. But uh, tell me in the comment section what you think. You know, give me a list of uh, if there's different ethnic groups living together and thing. You know, like in, in Serbia and stuff like that. But anyway, man, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to this so y'all can go check it out. Check out, you know, geography now and thing. See where they are do. See where they are do or go on there and thing. But uh, don't stop watching me though. Right there. Click that. Keep watching. Up on the top. Yeah, you get that playlist with all the history stuff in it. It's called the educational playlist. Click that one. Yes, I. And, uh, you know, we got to take care of each other, man. Look at all the interesting things there. All the things that I didn't know. No one know. You know what I'm saying? Thing? And tell me more in the comment section. Let's have some conversations. The more we get to know each other, the more we understand each other. Maybe we might live in some kind of peace because, you know, there's politics, then there's us. We got to start communicating all you. We got to, even though we have language barrier, hey, Google, translate, boom, we good to go. Listen, take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.